All right, it's time. So welcome everybody to the product update. I'll be talking a little bit about the release that we just had that you're all very aware of. I will talk a little bit about the one that we're about to finish. And because it's a little bit of a weird time for uh, engineering, because we're still, we're near the end of finishing the developmental cycle, but we haven't fully worked out what we're going to do next yet. I can't reveal too much, so I'm going to take a bit of a higher perspective for a change on what we're doing next. And we'll have plenty of time for questions. Um, I think the, the first GIF that I showed you was of the uh, one World Trade Center, which is this one as well. Um, so we just released GitLab 10, which is incredible. I still remember using GitLab 5, which in every aspect was way worse. And now we have this amazing release, which is fast. It's really beautiful. It's really usable. And it had contained a whole lot of awesome features. Uh, group level issue boards, object storage for LFS as, as the premium uh, features that we added. We added a lot of small but very important LDAP improvement, which is the kind of thing that everyone uses but no one really talks about. Very important. And of course, we started. Uh, with realizing the next step in our vision, all the DevOps. And I will get back to that much more. We did a bunch of other cool stuff. And of course, the new navigation, which I think makes everything in GitLab more usable. So super excited. But we are already working on 10.1. And in fact, by the end of this week, we'll have finished the major part of the work for 10.1 in terms of building features. And we start to work on the next one. Um, so let me walk you through some of the things that we're doing before starting to look at the further future. And if you're wondering that this is Yoda in the background, I don't know what it's made of. So I said already, LDAP is one of these things that no one talks about, it, but it's incredibly important to our customers. Actually, for a very long time, having better LDAP support was the only reason people would buy GitLab Enterprise Edition. So continuing to improve that is incredibly important, and we are adding we are basically multiplying the power of our LDAP integration with an LDAP user filter that allows you that instead of the way that you traditionally would set it up, allows you to configure a user filter um, when you configure LDAP. Very cool, and it basically allows you to do whatever. Um, I don't know if you've ever set up LDAP. I wouldn't recommend it, but it is very powerful. We also allow you to restrict uh, authors by, uh, so if you push a particular commit, and you want to make sure that only the author pushes that, you can now automatically do that in GitLab. So this is a way to ensure that no commits from outside coming out. And if you want to be very sure about someone only pushing what they own or what they wrote is um, the ability to reject unsigned commits. So basically, if you are not who you say you are, you will not be able to push particular commits into a GitLab Enterprise Edition Premium. So these features combine are super powerful ways of controlling who is using your GitLab instance, what is the code on your, inst your GitLab instance, and, and making sure that the code that goes into your code base is really from the people that you want to trust. Um, another addition that we're doing for Enterprise Edition Starter and Premium is safe configuration for issue boards. And I think we have to workshop the name a little bit because it's an incredibly cool feature that sounds very dull. It basically allows you to set the default filter for any issue boards. In other ways, it allows you to have an issue board that does exactly what you want to do for everybody. So you could say, this issue board only shows issues that have the label discussion, that only uh, appear in a particular milestone. Or you could even make one that is just for you. You could say, well, I have Yop's issue board and only show issues in this issue board from me, and then I can have any kind of list. It's extremely powerful. And with this, you can basically create any kind of Kanban, Agile, workflow, whatever it is that you want to do. It's way, way more powerful than anything I've used. And I'm very proud of us getting to this point. Another major thing is the ability to comment on images. So traditionally, GitLab has always been for code, right? So you have a piece of text, and you would comment on the text when you get any kind of div, when you have a merge request. And with this addition, you're able to actually place a comment anywhere in a particular place of an image. And they will have a number. And on the bottom, you'll see which number corresponds to which comment. So you can discuss images. Um, and that's very important, because nowadays we have code, but we also have a lot of assets like images and 
you know, uh, vector images, for instance, it's very important to give you the ability to also discuss those effectively. We want to do much more of like these kind of things in the future, make it much more flexible and powerful to work um, with images and other assets. This is a very important step. So I'm one I'm very excited about. There's been entire companies built on just this. InVision is a company that basically just does this. Of course, they have a lot of fancy features, but the core of it is just commenting on images. So I'm very happy that we're adding this. We'll allow you to lock issues and merge request comments if you have a public repository and you want to control the conversation. And then, because we have this collaboration, we will allow you to create a Google uh, container cluster straight from GitLab. So with all the effects that that has. And lastly, we'll allow you to view HTML artifacts online. And this is a really nice way if you have any kind of HTML artifact from your uh, pipelines, for instance, if you have a particular test process that outputs an HTML file, you can quickly see it. Um, super cool features, super exciting. And I can't believe, but it's actually going to be a better release than GitLab 10. But what are we doing next? Well, I came across this image online. Uh, I, I or this GIF, and you might say, well, Job, couldn't you find one of a higher resolution? I could, but not of this specific one. And I want you to have a good, good look at what you're seeing right here. So we're seeing, obviously, a car factory, and we're seeing all these robots that automatically, in this, this case, they weld together the parts of the robot. But if you look here at the top, and I, was, I love to see this, you see there's a timer of the cycle time and the product number. And this is so close to the kind of stuff that we want to do in GitLab, right? Because what do you do in GitLab? You come up with an idea, and then that idea grows through all of these stages. And all of these stages traditionally have been a pain. You would have to do every single thing by hand, and you would have to buy, build each component yourself. You couldn't just buy a robot and have, you know, have that complete, complete part of the process for you. And what we started to do with GitLab is we started to take away the work for you and say, you know, why don't you just use GitLab? Because we have a whole bunch of robots and you still have to come up with the design and you still have to say to the robots how you want your car to be put together and what the specifications of your car are. But you don't actually have to do the actual manufacturing instead of having people, you know, in, in, in a long line assembling the, your car. Now you can have people thinking about how these robots should function, and they can focus on other things, and they can make more beautiful cars and better cars. Um, and the cool part about this GIF was that you actually see the cycle time, one of those principles that we uh, find very important. Like, what is the time for creating value? If we reduce the time it takes to complete the cycle, to complete the car, to complete a feature or a change, it makes that everything is more efficient. It makes it much easier to do things. Um, so let's say that GitLab is a car factory. What would we improve about it today? Well, you would want to add more robots so you can do things faster. You want to add more cool counters like the one that you saw on top where you see the cycle time, right? Because you can learn from that. You want to be able to, to build more kinds of cars, right? You don't, if we are in, a, in the business of making these robots or building these kind of factories, we don't want to be restricted to one particular type of car. By the way, someone has their mic on muted. We want to do more in-house. You don't want to finish your car for 75% and then send it somewhere else. And we want to give you the ability to not just you know, do things on the short term and just to say, oh, we're now going to build a new car. Now we're going to build a new car. We want you to give you the ability to make long-term plans. You know, Like Tesla did it really well, where they had the Model S and the reason that they built the Model S is to make way for this more, this cheaper car that would be available to more people so they have the capital to build all these factories. And above all, if there's anything that's important when you build a car is you want it to be more safe. And every single one of these things, you can directly connect to the things we want to do in the future. Because we want you to not worry about the things that we can automate. So we're building auto DevOps. And what we'll be doing in the future, we release it in 10 as a beta. And what we'll be doing over the coming months is we'll expand it and make every single step automatically and work well. We'll be expanding our reporting and auditing tools because 
more cool con counters, but also to give you more insights into how you are performing. So you know where to improve and where, what to change and where to look for. We want to offer better support for different types of platforms and frameworks. You know, we know that a very, we all work, have the luxury of working in Go and in Ruby, uh, which are very nice programming languages, but most of the world still runs on Java. So we have to be ready to support Java. And with the car thing, I said, well, we want to build more in-house because the more you build in-house, the shorter that cycle time becomes, the better the experience is. So we're starting to think about what does it mean to be a cloud IDE and what are the components needed to do as much as possible within GitLab. And of course, we want to build something that is good. So one of the things that we're working on right now today and in over the many coming months is the ability to have multiple files in a single editor. So we have a multi-file editor with the terminal so that rather than only doing very simple things inside of GitLab, you can even do more complex things. And more complex things simply means the ability to edit multiple files and to run your test and to have, you know, have some kind of environment running. And today, this is a pain to do in the cloud. It doesn't work well. It's not integrated with anything. But we have all the components of GitLab. We have an editor. We have, you know, we have this tight integration with container clusters. We can spin up temporary environments and dynamic environments for you. Um, so why, why are we not making it easier to do all of this? Just imagine that you start working at GitLab. Instead of having to spend the time to set up GDK, you just sign in. And that's all you have to do. And we can do this. And we can do this for everybody. And I said, you know, we want to give you the ability to do more long-term planning. And I was specifically pointing towards something that we're starting to work on uh, with Tendal 2, which is portfolio management. The ability to create roadmaps, to take a step back from managing issues, from managing your projects on an issue level basis and say, we have these large projects that take a long time. How do we attribute people, how do, how do you set people on certain projects and how will that affect our timelines? And how can we think about this thing from a higher level? And we want to give you the power to visualize that in GitLab. And the cool thing is all the software in the world that does that today is like just doing this and none of the code stuff. So the data is all imaginary. And if you want to integrate it somehow with your tooling pipeline, you have to use these very, not very good integrations. Um, and we can offer a, a, a solution which is, well, this is what you're working on. And look, here are the commits. You know, we can show you the actual work. And if someone commits something that finishes a particular task, it will be immediately reflected on your high level roadmaps. And this is a very powerful idea. And lastly, <laughs> I said about cars have to be safe. And I think the same goes for code. I think we live today in, in a world where you know, having secure code and thinking about security is one of the most important things that we can we can do with our time as, as, as companies that build software, which is any company. So it's almost strange that we were not doing anything in this space yet. So we're starting to think about how can we do auto security, security out of the box, or at least give you the tools that if you have a project in GitLab, well, we have all the DevOps, why not have a step in there that does something for you in terms of security? It will never solve all the problems of security, but it will get you a very long way. And again, it's one of those things where there's an entire industry that builds very expensive products that are hard to use and hard to integrate in your existing pipeline. And at GitLab, we have this unique, this unique opportunity to integrate all of this. So we're starting to work on this. I know that uh, Dimitri DZ, the, our CTO, is, is now working on this, at least looking at this. I think it's super exciting to see that, you know, we're really giving you all the tools. We always said we want you to go from ID to production within GitLab. And I think with these kind of things, we're just making an even stronger case for that. You can already do that today, but tomorrow you can do that even better. And you will have something that's not just shipped, but it's also secure and well managed and you know very well what to do next. So that's the way I'm thinking about it. I thought it was a Nice metaphor. Um, more concretely, there will be a presentation uh, next week about our 2018 vision. There's also a document that is open and accessible to, for most of you. Uh, so I, I implore you to check that out. And that was it.
Any questions? Also check the chat. Yeah, I have a, I have a question around yeah. the enhanced LDAP features. Sure. So just, just from a sales perspective, when I speak with a client that is on EES and they use LDAP Group Sync, yeah. am, I, am I able to say, okay, it's great that you're doing that, but at the moment, it is not as, as flexible and secure as it could be. Like, like what's, what's the pitch there? Because I think that could be a, pow a powerful upsell. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that it's not as secure, but the flexibility that you have in Enterprise Edition Premium is way greater, especially with the feature that we're shipping uh, on October 22nd, the 10.1. It just makes it so incredibly easy, and it makes it so incredibly powerful to manage your, your LDAP. You can really, I always said you can do it in any way, but it was always with the node to decide, which is, well, as long as you manage your LDAP according to groups, then you can do it in any way. Uh, with this edition, you can really do whatever you want. If you have a very complex LDAP server or multiple servers even set up, and you want to say, well, anyone with the attribute um, developer should have this particular level of access to this particular resource inside of GitLab, you can do that now. So that, and this was actually a requirement by a, a, one of our customers. They, they were asking for this, and it made total sense to do this. So that, that's the pitch, extremely flexible um, authentication authorization. Okay, thank you. Larry asks, do we have any plans to provide this kind of information, recorded or otherwise, to our customers periodically regarding vision? Yeah, so next week there's a presentation that will be public, and I think it will be posted on our YouTube channel. Um, I'm sure marketing has other ideas. I'm always happy to do these kind of things. And of course, this video, I believe it will be public as well. So, uh, but um, yeah, we're always willing to do these kind of things. We just hired a great, product marketer that will also help with these kind of things. So we were a little bit short in that department, so I'm sure more is coming. Am I presenting it? Oh, oh I'm happy to present anything, Larry. Mm, Job, I love, I love your enthusiasm. That's my point. If I could bottle it and sell it, it would really make our jobs a lot easier. Thank you. <laughs> well, you're free to, you're free to take it. Um, I, uh, during my working hours, I'm, ha I'm happy to, to present anything to anyone. Uh, Connor says, LDAP is the main thing I get asked about on calls. Yeah, this is one of those insights. You know, within GitLab, we don't talk that much. Like Mike and I talk a lot about LDAP, but other than that, you don't hear a lot about it, and I hear support people a lot about it. But other than that, it's not, it's not exciting, but, you know, in a way, it is very exciting. We, we build this product, which is very flexible. You know, the fact that we have subgroups, no one offers that. Uh, makes GitLab very flexible, very powerful to manage a large amount of people. And, but every, all organizations have LDAP set up, Active Directory, it's basically the same thing. And so the fact that we do such a good job of integrating these two, uh, it might not sound exciting, but for these large organizations, it's a, it's a deal breaker. If, if you don't have something, that's good. All right. Any more questions? Mikael says, very excited where this is going. What about authoring tools, especially for cross-platform mobile applications? That is a big pain in a mobile development world. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have something very specific for that. Um, I would love to hear more, uh, Mikael. Maybe what, what are the problems that are, people are uh, dealing with? And then I'm happy to discuss it more. But uh, honestly, I'm not super, super familiar with the cross-platform mobile uh, world. I think in general, when you talk about mobile development, I, I, I do some Swift development for iOS on the side. It's not very good. Like It's a little bit painful. And you find that because it's a little bit painful, the the communities around sharing open source libraries are also not as good. So anything we can do in regard to improving that, I would, I would support. Um, like yeah, uh, just, just like basically it's like when you're shipping cross-platform uh, applications and like the mobile, mobile applications, uh, there are like multiple resolutions. You have to test your like pipeline for a lot of like edge cases and 
there are like companies that are built around uh, basically just publishing stuff uh, uh, around like just being able to put your app on the store. Like it's uh, it's a big pain, uh, like managing all those certifications and like certificates and and uh, it goes all the way to up to translations and those those kind of things. So that that be uh, good. Like I, I we're currently very good at shipping server applications. Uh, that'd be very good to ship better uh, mobile apps. Yeah, that's that's actually a good point. You know, one of the strategies that we take is we take some open source library and make it very easy to use it, right? And I think uh, we have a lot of ground to win there. So this, you're actually, <laughs> you're giving me ideas because we had, I know about at least one iOS library that does exactly what you say, where you have the whole certificate flow. I forgot the name for it, but it's, it's all very prettily designed. Um, we could make it in that in CI, you could very easily access that, for instance, as some sort of CI protocol. All right. Um, doo -doo -doo. Joel says, I love the product directions, but on that said, if we go customer facing with the software factory analogy, we need to differentiate from CA and Microsoft who use the factory analogy heavily in our marketing. Joel, I don't know if we should do this. This was just me finding a GIF of a, of a factory and then and putting that there. I think we're doing a good job of presenting uh, our, our products in a particular way. Um, but you make a good point about differentiating ourselves from CA and Microsoft. So we actually spent a lot of time, uh, Victor and I, looking at their products, right? Specifically TFS, Rally, these kind of clarity, whatever the names they give to nowadays. And what we see is, well, it's basically what I said earlier. These are products that are not well integrated. It's, not, it's clearly not the single package that we offer. And second, they are so terribly designed. Like they're so user unfriendly, and it, it's they feel so less century. Um, but yeah, I don't know about the factor analogy. That's 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 me. That's not our, our marketing department and, and having a good good idea. Uh, John says that the LDAP attributes were particularly of interest for a call of yesterday. So that's that's very nice to hear. Yeah, as, as I said, I think this is one of those great great features that makes our customers very excited. All right. You all have, I don't know, 30 seconds is awkward, but 30 seconds of finding more questions to ask. I'll just fill it the time with me talking. I've been recording my heart rate all day. I was, I had to go to the bank. I had to be in the hospital. I found that my heart rate was very low at the bank, reasonable at the hospital. It's now, 75, which is a normal understanding. Simon asks, what are you most excited about on behalf of Jacob, who's not here? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great question. Jacob always asks me. I stand by what I say almost every release. I find that shipping software is still way too hard. Like, I don't, I just want to build an app. Right? So I, I go, I learned Ruby, I learned Rails, and now I, I think I can build an app. But no, now I have to learn Git. All right, all right, okay. I spent time learning Git. Now I want to put it somewhere. What do I have to do? Well, there's one gazillion options, and they all consist of a million little parts that you have to compose together, and there's never a single solution. And then if you end up choosing a particular solution, and you read on Hacker News the next week that that solution is the worst, and it's outdated, and it doesn't work, and you know, let's say you even get it running, then you have to deal with the fact to maintain it and you're basically fixing your pipeline all the time. Making it easy for anyone to build any kind of application is the most exciting thing we can do. So the idea of DevOps, of having a single solution to all of these problems, where if you don't want something in particular, you can just leave it out or you can put something else there, but we give you something to work with so you can move on and you can focus on your app. That is what I'm most excited about. And I think all of these things fit into that, right? Today we do it extremely well for certain kind of projects and we do it extremely well for teams of almost any size. Tomorrow we do it for even larger teams and for people that are not directly programming. And we're doing it even better if you want to deploy to a cluster. Or even, you don't even have to set up your own cluster anymore. All of those things make it easy to build whatever you want to build. And I think that is the most exciting thing. 
All right, I'm happy that you would all buy EEP from me. You can just go to the website and sign up there. If you leave a reference that was from me, I'll get a little, no, I'm kidding. Um, oh yeah, last point, we will ship Enterprise Edition Ultimate and we'll ship it before the end of the year. Uh, that will be portfolio management. So that's a little for next time. Thank you everybody. See you at the team call.